Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition, a action-packed edition of Bango Magazine, because we have four segments on the show today, not our normal three. And starting things off is football. Jerry Boyce, the head coach of the Bengals, will join us. And Pasquale Vacchio, the senior linebacker, outstanding linebacker, will be joining us as well. Maria DePeters, women's volleyball at 18-5 and five for the season, and she's bringing aboard Sherelle McLean, a senior middle hitter. We're going to talk to Nick Carrier. Hockey, taking on Penn State in a week and a half. You're going to enjoy that interview. And then I'm going to wrap it up with a little cross country and Dustin Dimmitt, the head coach. Dustin's bringing along Kyle Pilecki. So stay with us. We're going to come back and talk a little football. Let's talk a little football here. And Jerry Boyce, the head coach of the Bengals, joins us along with Pasquale Vacchio. And welcome, men. Um, boss, this has been a uh, interesting year, to say the least. And you've been uh, doing this for quite a while, uh, both as a player and a coach and a head coach. And I'm kind of curious, have you, have you experienced a season quite like this one so far? No, quite frankly. <laughs> Tom, I have not. It's um, a real puzzle to me. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I have have been fortunate to be here at Buffalo State through uh, the building process. And the thing that I was uh, most proud of is once we got through those, uh, really the three years of, of building and <clears throat> kind of changing the culture and those things, that once we started to experience success, we stayed there. Uh, yes, you're going to have some losses here and there, but mm-hmm. we stayed at a high level of play. Um, this now is our fourth season. Uh, as we talked uh, during preseason and before the uh, the Cortland game, I mentioned to the to the guys that now we are at the the final stage of building a program, and that stage is the working together. Uh, but I also call it the f- f- performance stage, mm-hmm. where it's time to perform, and we certainly did that in our week one. Um, had a, a game that was disappointing uh, at Brockport, and then came back with, uh, a, uh, as you know, a good win uh, against <laughs> right. Wisconsin Whitewater. <laughs> but since then, <clears throat> we have not lived up to those expectations mm-hmm. at all, uh, Tom. So as a coach, very frustrated, yeah. um, disappointed in that, that we haven't um, – I got to where I thought we would be uh, going into the fourth year. I can certainly hear your frustration in your voice. And, and, and obviously we refer to the, the great win, not a good win, the great win over Wisconsin Whitewater, the number one team in the country, had won 46 straight games, and we drive out to Wisconsin and, and win that game. And, and, and Pasquale, since then, it, it, doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to want to click in. Do you, do you, what do you sense as a student athlete on the field and a, and a player and a senior uh, leader? Um, I hate the word. I mean, I don't want to use the word content. I don't think we were content, but mm-hmm. I think we were almost overwhelmed with the win at Wisconsin. Not overwhelmed, but we felt v- very highly about ourselves. Sure. And we kind of went into the next game not, not like the right way. We weren't right. going in the way we should have. We we'll keep staying we just let one get by on Alfred, I think, mm-hmm. and then we finally realized that we had, coach mentioned that we have a, a mark, a target on our back now, <laughs> yep. a very large one, right. and uh, like he said yesterday, I don't think we embraced it mm-hmm. like we should have, and now we're going to, every team that we play is going to come in with their best, sure. their best game, trying to beat us, and uh, I think uh, we just haven't done a good job since then. You know, Jerry, he mentioned an interesting <laughs> phrase in the beginning of his answer there is, how do you handle that type of win? Uh, it, it wasn't just a win. It was a national victory. I mean, ESPN, the Buffalo, I mean, it was out there. And sometimes it's difficult, I would assume, for youth uh, 18, 20, 21 to handle something like that, rather just a, maybe a win over your number one team in your conference. What do you think about I don't want to call it an excuse, but what do you think about that? Well, Tom, there is, uh, and particularly football, where it's such an emotional game. Yeah. Um, you have to get ready to go out and run into people <laughs> and have contact. Yeah. And it's next uh, to hockey, it's the only, only sport that requires that. Right. 
Uh, and that's one of the reasons why, particularly in football, you only see them play once a week because you can get yourself geared into that. Um, you can't do that two or three times in the course of a week. Right. So the, the mental approach is so important to it that you've got to get yourself at a level. And there's always going to be a little bit of a natural letdown uh, when you have spent so much into that, that, that one win. Sure. Uh, so, yes, I'm expecting a, a little bit of a, a, mm -hmm. a letdown. And our problem, quite frankly, with the, with the Alfred game was uh, not taking advantage of opportunities in the first half. Uh, and then, then we had a little bit of a snowball at the top of the mountain and it avalanched on us. Uh, so, but still, it's... It is the onus on players to get themselves to that point, and for me as a head coach to help them get right, there. Right. Um, so uh, I guess it's just uh, it's it's such a psychological aspect of the game, Tom, that um, uh, you, you try to get a get gauge on the, on the guys and see where they're at. Right. Um, but Pasquale's white. Right. One of the things that uh, we we have to play our best every week and. In the last three weeks, we've had some phases of our game mm -hmm. play well, uh, but other phases let us down. You are having an outstanding season. You're coming off an outstanding season, uh, by far leading the team in tackles, uh, by far leading the team in solo tackles. Is it about where you, is this exceeding your expectations, or is this where you, you saw yourself your senior season? Um, I think I'm just playing football. It's, <laughs> I just like playing football. I'm just, I wasn't expecting to do the things I'm doing, I'm just playing as hard as I can every time I get a chance to play. What a super answer, and I'm sure the coach is happy to hear that. we got about a minute left, and we're going down memory lane this Saturday, especially for you. Uh, we're going to Ithaca. You played there. You coached there. Uh, we used to play Ithaca on a regular basis and now going to again with the new conference. Your thoughts going into this game and, and as it relates to the team? Well, parts of that are, are you know personal sure. things, Tom. Uh, and, but... Uh, that's aside because it's another game for us, um, and we're struggling. Uh, it all comes down to, uh, you know, 11 players making and doing their job on every play because we're going to have to do that against anybody. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a, a personal uh, thing to go down there and play Ithaca, but... Um, you know, it's, it's just have to approach it just like you do any game time. Right. Just, just for us, it's, a, it's another game. Well, gentlemen, thanks for being on the show. Sorry, such a short segment, but uh, best of luck Saturday at Ithaca and the rest of the season. Long way to go still. Uh, as we take a break, I do want to bring up uh, Orange Crush, which is our homecoming on campus and family weekend. That's October 23rd through the 27th. There's a great tailgate party. Before the football game, that starts at 1045, goes until noon on the 27th. Obviously, Jerry and Pasquale will take on Hartwick. That's a noon kickoff. And then Saturday evening and night is our Hall of Fame ceremony. That begins at 430 at the Sports Arena. If you'd like to get tickets for the Hall of Fame, give me a call at 878-6514 or drop me an email at the email that's listed on the screen. We are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little volleyball, and Maria DePeters joins us. Stay with us. Well, we want to congratulate Kelsey Bayshore, our Tim Hortons Athlete of the Week in five matches last week, uh, the junior fashion textile major. Uh, in the matches against Nazareth, Case Western, Pitt Bradford, 76 digs, 19 kills, and nine blocks. She was an uh, all-tournament uh, selection. She leads the Bengals with 709 assists, 304 digs, and 38 aces, and was also the Suniac Player of the Week, I believe. Yeah. So uh, congratulations to Kelsey Bayshore. And we are joined, how about that, what a lead in, with volleyball. Maria DePeters is here along with Sherelle McLean. Welcome, ladies. And uh, I wish we had 30 minutes to talk, but we only have a few <laughs> minutes because this has been a terrific season and everybody's smiling. Yes, it has. 18 and 5, 3 and 0 oh at the taping. Were you expecting this at training camp, this type of success? I was. I, w I was right. definitely expecting it. I didn't want to get my hopes up, um, but we have just the returners that we had coming back in key positions, like Kelsey in the setting position, Chelsea Moore in defense. Um, Sam coming back, and then and Sherelle in the middle. We had 
Um, and then the freshmen coming in, I knew the talent that they had. They all played in national level club teams and really, okay. really strong high school teams. And I knew just how how great of a team it was with attitudes and personalities, and they really knew that they were going to mesh well together. And everyone was is on the same page now. They they're here to win. Interesting, Shroud. Did you sense that too? I'm I'm hearing great chemistry from these comments. People getting along, liking each other, playing for each other. You know, there's no I in team, right. but there is an ME. <laughs> but uh, did you sense that too in training camp? Right off the bat. I mean, mm. we had our recruiting visits. Everybody met well together. And then we played together in the summer league. So it was basically like we were coming in already a team. Very interesting. And this must be, like, so exciting for you. you you're a four-year uh, player for the volleyball team coming out of City Honors. Um uh, how exciting is it for you? As the season winds down, we take it one match at a time, I know. But but there's wonderful potential here from this team at the end of the year. Oh, I'm so excited. I came in 2009, and we ended up being fourth place in SUNYACs, and then the next year, third place. And last year, we were second place, and now we're really hoping to get first place in SUNYAC pool play. So. Tell me about her. What does she give you on the court? Um, this year, she has just totally stepped up. So the first year I came in as an assistant coach, she was a freshman. Hmm. And she's a middle hitter, and that's what I played in college. So, you know, I work with her day in and day out. Wow. And I think this weekend I was just so proud of her because against the game in Case Western, probably say she had 20 attempts on the ball. And say she had 10 kills. I mean, these are just makeup sure. skills. I don't know what her real statistics are. Out of those 10 kills, she probably hit to get a kill, she probably hit, attacked, aggressively attacked the ball once. Every other point that she won, she st strategically placed the ball. Uh -huh. And that's a big part of being a middle, is beating the block and finding open holes on the court. And seeing that and knowing that I've been trying to work with her with that and four years and seeing her put it all together is absolutely phenomenal. I think they call that a little bit of maturity, yes. where, you, where you're understanding absolutely. the game a little bit more. And it's interesting to bring that up, because statistically I look at your stats and your third or fourth in kills is – what coach is talking about, and yet by far you're number one in blocks. Which is which do you like better, killing, <laughs> you know, sp a great spike or a great block? I think a great block because the other team is trying to get a point, and then I go up in the air and I stop them. <laughs> so is there is there a technique to a great block? Um, timing is everything. Okay, and you got to make sure. Coach is always telling me not to jump so high and just really block the ball with my hands and not my arms. So why do they not? jump so high? Why do you not want them to jump so high? I mean, even if she does jump high, the whole point is to penetrate over the net. And okay. if you jump high and you go straight up and the ball hits your arm, you can't control the ball with your forearm. You only can control it with your hands. So the whole okay. point of blocking is you have to get your hands on the ball. As soon as the ball hits here, that's when the ball can tool out of bounds. I'm going to use that in my YMCA co-ed league. Okay, so perfect. Really you should. <laughs> get a lot of blocks. See, we learn something new every day here on Bengal Magazine. What do you like most about this team? I think you may have already answered that, but, you know, you look at the uh, ladies on the team and the chemistry. What do you like most about this year's team? Their, their personalities, their heart. Um, even if we have a bad practice, I find it hard to be mad at them because I know that they're still trying hard and they make me laugh so much <laughs> and they make one another laugh. They're always, they always come in ready to work hard. That's mm -hmm. just never an issue. And every single person on this team hates to lose. Mm -hmm. And as a coach, that's really, really hard to find, especially at the Division Three level, is finding atti attitudes from people that they hate to yeah, lose. And, you know, finding that. You sense that too, right. Sherelle? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, is this a continuation from last year? I mean, I, I went back, and you, you really lost one senior last yeah. year, Paige. And so this team's kind of been together. You had a pretty good ending to last season. D did you sense a continuation? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, we had so many improvements going into spring ball, too. When spring ball, we picked up right where we left off, and that's exactly how I felt in preseason. You know, we didn't take five steps back because okay. you can't. And I think our, all of our returners came in in shape. All of our freshmen came in ready to work hard. So, yeah, we just totally pushed forward from where we left off, definitely. Got about a minute and a half left in the segment. Uh, now what? 18-5, and five, and there's a gap there of, of matches before Suniac, uh, pool play and then, and then Suniac. Is it... Win at all costs, is it, is it working on things as you look toward the end of the season and the playoffs? Um, we have two regional games coming up, and so the, that's definitely win at all costs because the more um, games we win regionally, the better chance we might have to get an outside bid to the NCAAs. Okay. Um, you know, we played Damon again, which again is a school going into transition in D2, yep. and that's just a really great game that prepares us for SUNYACs. 
because if we can really compete against girls that are getting academic schol or athletic scholarships to play volleyball, mm -hmm. we should be able to compete and win in the right. SUNYAC conference. Um, you know, looking at this past weekend, we had a couple of things that we had to work on, and that's what we're working on. We're doing things to working on our errors so we can make them better. Okay. So right now, converting offensively, we struggled with a little bit, and we do that, or blocking. Those are the two big things we work on every day in practice. Wow. Well, this is exciting, just hearing NCAA bid. Wouldn't that be something? But a uh, lot of work ahead. Congratulations on a great start, and let's keep moving on it. Thank you. You know, uh, we've got an interesting hockey game coming up in uh, about a week and a half, October 19th, and we were fortunate to catch up with Nick Carrier before the show, and here's my interview with Nick. Nick, thanks for joining us this morning. I really appreciate you getting on the air with us. Uh, we've got an interesting hockey game coming up uh, on Friday, October 19th. Of all teams, Division I Penn State comes to town. Can you give us a little history of how this game got on the schedule? Uh, Joe Batista used to coach Penn State, uh, no longer currently the head guy Gadowski, but Joe um, uh, had a very successful club hockey program there. And um, we ran into each other and, and talked about uh, possibly scheduling when they were uh, playing an independent schedule, which is this year. So they're playing some Division three teams, okay. some Division one teams, a couple of club hockey teams um, before they end up joining the, uh, the Big Ten Conference, I believe, coming up uh, next season. So we were just able to figure it out. Uh, they wanted to do two uh, mm -hmm. home and home. So uh, we're going to play them here on the 19th. And then a couple weeks later, we're going to go down there. Uh, the new facility won't yeah. be ready yet. Uh, uh, so we're going to play them at the old one, but uh, it'll be a great opportunity to play against uh, some of the best talent uh, that, that our guys will, will face. It's kind of an interesting uh, story because here you have the Buffalo Sabres owner, Terry Pagula, who gave a quote-unquote ton of money to build the hockey arena down there, and now their team is coming up here to play in Buffalo. It's uh, just, just ironic. It is. It is a little bit, and it's, uh, you know, hey, we wouldn't mind getting a little 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 piece of that pie, Watch but, uh, now, but yes, absolutely. Mr. But uh, <laughs> no, it was uh, it, it was very very nice to see him get behind a program like that, and, and nice to see his passion for hockey, and yeah. and great to have them. You know, coincidence a little bit to have them coming into Buffalo, and, right. and I think it'll be a great uh, great thing for Division Three hockey for for people to get a chance to see uh, the difference. You know, and, and and you know we're we're obviously planning on hanging hanging right in there with the Penn State guys. Well, let me ask you that. I mean, we got about a minute left in the segment. Uh, great great challenge for the boys I mean here uh, division three looking up maybe at a division one program and, and it's probably one of the biggest events we've had on campus in a long long time a division one program like this coming in here do the boys are they already looking forward to it and what's the scuttlebutt in the locker room uh, the, the guys have had this one circled <laughs> uh, you know dotted highlighted on on the radar for quite some time since since we told them that we got them on the schedule um, you know early last year so they're they're excited about it it's right. it's uh, you know it's one of those things where you know all the pressure is kind of on them and right. um, you know they have everything to lose and not a whole lot to gain you know they're expected they have division one transfers they have a lot of high-end recruits um, but when it comes down to it you know you put your six guys on the ice we'll put ours on the ice and, and we'll have some fun with it and, and I know our guys that's why they excited. play them on the ice and not on paper right coach Absolutely. that's what I used to hear but anyways Nick good luck to you on October 19th and once again it's Bengals hockey versus Penn State yes you heard that right Penn State Friday October 19th it's a seven o'clock puck drop at our sports arena slash ice arena tickets are five dollars at the door uh, kids 12 and under are free so come on out and watch some great hockey the Bengals taking on Penn State on October 19th we are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little cross-country. Stay with us. Unbelievable. Last time well, let me tell you something, folks. The youth of America does not know who Ed Sullivan is or Kara Burnett. It means nothing to this show, but this is what we talk about off-studio. So, anyways, we're going to talk a little cross-country now with Dustin Dimmitt, the head coach of the Bengals, and Kyle Pilecki, who doesn't know who Carol Burnett or Ed Sullivan is, but that's okay, Kyle. Welcome to the show. Uh, let's first talk about, uh, we have two programs to talk about. Let's start with the ladies. Uh, progress slowly but surely coming along in your estimation? Yeah, we, we have great depth on the women's team. Uh, they still haven't got a couple key concepts that the men have, just about doing all the little extra things. Uh, they work hard every day at practice, but doing all the little things uh, will hopefully get them to where the guys are. But okay. we've had four different uh, women be our number one girl. So I different one that. every race. And Correct. Part of that uh, consistency is uh, doing those little things and 
having a little bit more uh, dedication to a way of life and running and not just okay. doing it at practice. I think last time you were on the show, you had, you, you had, you had mentioned that, that the men's side, uh, you were really looking at this wonderful potential to come to fruition, and it, it appears that it has. Do you agree with that? Uh, definitely. Uh, we're way ahead of where we have been the last few years, uh, being regionally ranked now, right. uh, beating the uh, majority of the teams in our conference. Early in the season doesn't really matter. We have to do it at the end of the season. But uh, definitely showing some progress and being ahead of teams that we haven't been in the past. Yeah, we were talking yesterday uh, that the team is basically considered in the top tier of the conference, whereas maybe years past bottom tier. So that progress is showing. What does this guy here next to you, Kyle, offer in terms of that progress? More depth? Uh, Talk to us a little bit about Kyle. Uh, first, Kyle offers a lot of great leadership. He's a uh, captain on the team. Uh, he's really helped solidify the team and uh, have them focus on running and not things outside of the sport when we're at a meet or on the road. And right. uh, Also, he's just had a great uh, maturity from freshman to junior year, continually getting better, always being uh, best at the end of the season, too, both in cross country and track. Uh, so really staying right to the training plan and uh, getting better because of that. Great. Kyle, your, your best is 27.08 right now. Is it where you thought you'd be as you progressed toward SUNYACs and the regionals? Uh, I actually thought I'd be a little bit faster than okay. that. But I'm not disappointed because my summer training was a little off towards the end. So, And I've been pro progressing very well in, in coaches' workouts. So I think that Right now, I'm content where I am. Great. He, he, you know, he had mentioned something about senior leadership during practice, and I, it, it made me think right away. Geez, when you guys practice, you, you, you go to Chestnut Ridge or Bond Lake or whatever, you get off the bus, you stretch, and you go. You just run. And there's really not a coach around you, per se. So where does your – what do you do on those practices when he's referring to senior leadership? Are you – guys, let's go. Is, how do you do that with your teammates? Yeah, sometimes I gotta kick him in the butt a little bit. Oh boy! Yeah. Okay. Um, most of the guys that I run with are pretty on the ball, like they're willing to go. Sometimes you just gotta step back a little bit and tell one or two people to yeah. pick it up. Or do you? Do what do you, you? This is now your third year running. And by the way, if we can get a shot of these, these are not his running sneakers, <laughs> but we were talking about those. Those are very fashionable sneakers. But uh, <laughs> third year, what do you like best about this team compared to other teams? This team, probably the, the kids on the team. Okay. Their personalities, B, especially his personality is amazing. Like, he's probably the probably the strongest character on the team. Okay. And being around people like that definitely makes you want to work harder. And and who is he referring to? Uh, Bumquith. Bumquith. Yeah. Oh, Sorry. that's right. Last time. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. He was a guest yeah. earlier. Okay, fantastic. Now we recently ran, I believe it was Louisville, where where we kind of moved up a little bit in terms of some Division One programs. Yeah. What was that experience like, and did you get out of that what you wanted to? Uh, it, it was a great experience because uh, we weren't originally supposed to be in the race we were in, and. Uh, with some of the uh, rankings and things that we've had this year. Uh, the committee that selects those races saw that and without us asking bumped us into a uh, scholarship division race. Okay. And uh, we finished about where we thought we would. Uh, we've been a little unlucky on the men's side. Every race we've had one of our top five guys that's sick or yeah. something. And that they're running through it and working hard, but we just trying to get right. everybody healthy now at the end of the year, but definitely got out of it a large race where there's a lot of people out front that we're going to need for the regional uh, race. So that, that was hmm. the main reason to go down there. Great experience for you. What yeah. did you take out of that meet? Uh, I took watching the other races, the inspiration from that, and then I used it in my race, and I tried to, Fabulous. I tried to catch my teammates. Yeah, absolutely. We are down to about a minute and a half, but we move into Oberlin this weekend, and then two weeks, and then Suniaks. What's the thought process, coaching-wise, as you go to Oberlin and then knowing Suniaks is two weeks away? Well, we go to Oberlin for a couple reasons. One, it's one of the faster courses in the country, so it's a little bit of a confidence boost to go in there and run a PR. And our training has just shifted a little bit to uh, more end-of-the-season mode, uh, where we're doing less mileage and a little more intensity to really try to get ready for Suniaks. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other reason uh, this year is because uh, how they choose teams for the national championships is based on uh, the at-large bids, how you do against other teams from other regions. And this uh, meet's actually called the Interregional Rumble because 
Uh, teams from usually six of the eight regions show up there. I mean, there's teams coming from Minnesota and from uh, Kentucky and from Georgia and all over to this meet to kind of compete against the best of other regions and really show that they're worthy of one of those wow. national bids. Well, guys, thanks very much for being on the show. Best of luck this weekend at Oberlin and then the Suniaks. And that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Bengal Magazine. Thanks to everybody on the show and for you, the viewers. And we'll see you in two weeks for more Bengal Magazine.